Asking folks to hold the space till she gets here. Everybody's good with that? Yes, Everybody okay? Yes, All right. Yes, sir, brother. Come on. Um, I represent the hip hop community. My name is Mr. Fab. Um, when I heard the news yesterday, um, and like everyone else that's here, kind of, I have a daughter, first of all. So I just, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine getting that phone call. I can't imagine being on the call and response. I, I it's, it, it just touches us different. Um, what I want to say is, to those of you who don't know who the works that we do in the community for the past 10, 11 years, Backpack giveaways, toy drives, turkey drives, domestic abuse seminars, all of this stuff we do this year round. I woke up this morning and I called the captain of the police department and I told him, I said, I want to do a funds for guns. And I'm going to put up the first $5,000. Um, and my whole thing is, I want to reach, if we could reach, what I don't know, whatever number, 10,000, what, I, I wanted to know if the city would be able to match our effort, whatever we raise. If we could put twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 up to buy guns back off the street, whatever they do with these guns, destroy them, whatever it is that they do. If we could get 20 guns off the street, that's a potential. 20 lives that we help save. I'm, pastor will tell you, I've, this has been my childhood friend since we were kids. We played basketball together, sports together, grew up in the same neighborhood. Anything that he does, I'm always on the front line. Several things that I've done for many years, he's been right there with me. I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is, I always do. So, it, by the time I may sit and reflect with it, it might be $10,000, but I know for sure I got $5,000 in my pocket right now that I'm, that's going towards the gun, funds for guns. We're going to make, I don't know what the Kickstarters, whatever they call it, program, and, and if nobody kicks in like we expect, I might end up going broke for it. Because at the end of the day, if we don't become the change that we wish to see, nothing's going to change. My grandmother used to always say, nothing changes if nothing changes. The rallying and the marching and the gathering, yeah, that's cool. But action speaks louder than any word has ever said. If we aren't on the front line implementing and inoculating the change of which we spew, then none of this means nothing. If we are not incorporating and revamping, reshaping, reculturalizing the minds of the youth, teaching them new things. First, we have to unlearn the BS that's been spewed in our heads all day. I remember you walk in the elder's house, you take your hat off. Those things like that is no norm. We on the bar, you see somebody get on, you stand up for that lady. You stand up for that. The, the kids have no knowledge of things that were passed on in tradition and we can't get mad at them. For who are we to blame someone who doesn't know? I can't hold you in, in, in contempt and if you don't know, because you haven't been taught. So we have to start teaching again. We have to start educating in the community and it starts with us. We have to be these role models and powerful influences in the youth. We can't just ignore the youth because what's going on right now are the actions of ignored youth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's it. We talk about how the youngsters don't care and they're wild and they're dangerous. Well, that's what neglect does. Right. Okay. When you turn your back on a potential problem, that problem doesn't go away. It grows. When you send a child from Juvenile Hall to San Quentin, the prison pipeline only induces his bad behavior. There's no rehabilitation and incarceration. My brother has 107 years in jail. He'll never get out. Out of my 34 years of life, he's been in jail 30 years. I've seen my brother four years free. 
jail never helped with re rehabilitation. It only made them worse. Because when you go to jail, you group with, you seminar with more criminals. So you learn more criminality. You learn the tactics of how to be sneakier. When these young kids out here have no summer programs, when they don't have any summer job employments, when they don't have any activities to do, when they don't have a place or a shelter, a boys club to go to, they didn't have the bush ride basketball gym like we had. They didn't have the, the these other programs that helped occupy our time. They say idle time is the is the devil's playground, and we living in hell right now. Because this city is ablaze, and the only reason is because all of these children don't have nothing to do. We say, oh, those, that's, a, that's a troubled child. Well, you know, Malcolm X was a troubled child. Huey Newton was a troubled child. There's been several troubled childs and several troubled children that have evolved with the proper tools and the proper guidance from leadership, from guidance. If we turn our back on those that need our direction, then they only go to the way that their heart's going to tell them. And their hearts is in these streets. Because that's the only thing that's identifying with them and that they identify with. You don't join a gang just for the sole sake of joining a gang. You join a gang because you have nowhere else to go. And it's a feeling of attachment. There's a brotherhood there. There's a feeling of humility that someone understands you. There's a feeling that someone is going through the same things that I'm going through. So I'm going to join these guys and we're going to be family and we're going to ride for the same cause because everyone else is ignoring us. So then they become profiled. Then they become labeled criminals, problems. And those are the same kids that we have to grow with. We have to learn to build with. We continue to neglect them, that problem's only going to snowball. And that snowball theory, it'll be an avalanche, and no one will be safe in these streets. On, we create the chaos that we complain about. Help us. <clears throat> Don't complain about it when it gets chaotic, because you ignored the small chaos. When they were having a snowball fight, you ignored it and thought it was laughter. Now that it's an avalanche, everyone's complaining. We have to stand on the front lines and be the change that we wish to see, not only in ourselves, but in our children. Not only for our children, but for our children's children. We have to stop ignoring the cries of the youth because those cries turn into anger. That anger and that frustration turns into actions. Those actions are never on the good side. We raise them. Our children are, we are our children's first teachers. They say it takes a village and we ignoring the children. So they raising themselves. We got babies killing babies. Because they don't know the process and how prominent it is. They don't know the level of ex the extremities that's, that they're doing, that they're partaking in, because no one has ever gave them right for wrong. Because their wrong has always been a correction. Because nobody stepped in and said, no, wait, don't do that. Stop ignoring the city, man. Stop ignoring these kids. Because this is not going to be the only thing going to continue to happen. We keep ignoring them. Let's create jobs. Let's create opportunities. And if none of that, let's create counsel. Before we got here, there was two brothers that were arguing about a situation that they had going on and it, it became wild and loud and I walked up to him and I say whether one person is right and one person is wrong from across the street it looks like two fools they say thou shall not argue with the fool because from a distance no one can tell who's who so we must create counsel have you when the last time you took a second to listen to someone when is the last time you took a second to uh, respond to a hello hey how you doing how was your day fine thank you for asking we live in the days where social media has arrest, erased the human experience so now we don't even speak to each other it's head nods and hand gestures so we're not listening nor are we talking let's create counsel y'all man like I say I'll send the information to pastor 
and 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 do all our social medias and whatever else we can to boost this but by the end of this month we're going to do this thing called funds for guns and any help from the community is well welcomed if not we're going to do what we can but it takes a village y'all it takes a village thank you